one step forward, two steps back? I really struggled with the idea of this video. I, I wrote a whole script more generally about augmented reality and what that is and how clumsy these different brand names are for things like AR and MR and XR glasses. But following the Apple Vision Pro announcement during WWDC, Apple's strategy bothered me in a way I couldn't quite articulate while live reacting on Mastodon or on my private Discord. I had to sit with this info for just a minute. This is a more off-the-cuff rambling editorial, and I've got a few notes in front of me right now, but I'm getting really tired of Apple getting these breathless accolades from the tech press for making iterative improvements to products we already have. Apple Vision Pro is interesting from a hardware perspective, and Apple is doing a few things that I think will be fun to play with. But for all the speculation and years of rumors of a headset to finally arrive at this developer kit style product should be supremely disappointing. I've been fascinated by the potential of bringing more face computing to consumers in practical in accessible ways. VR headsets, heads-up display glasses, and most recently glasses with some basic AR functionality built in. I think it's kind of gross how often we see comments on articles and videos about these kinds of products taking a wait for Apple to do it right approach. It's kind of gross how trailblazing hardware never gets the credit it really deserves. And it's kind of gross how Apple holds us all back. <laughs> looking at the tech space, looking at reviewers, another manufacturer has to deliver an astounding product at a disruptive price to get a reasonable recommendation from tech writers. But Apple can turn out some mediocre iterative gear and will always have an implied purchasing recommendation. The Vision Pro is a horrific compromise of hardware and features at an incredible price tag. Apple's own keynote is a half-hearted attempt at hand-waving away the obvious compromises from what techies were hoping Apple might deliver. Apple fans have been waiting a while to see this headset. Apple's own marketing language is a ridiculous exercise in overhyping, providing limited information, and potentially misrepresenting the actual performance of the product. Watching that keynote, it was all simulated. None of it was practical. None of it was live in front of an audience. And tech outlets are just so impressed with what Apple showed off. They showed us almost nothing. The actual presentation for the Vision Pro was roughly 30 minutes long. I'm not going to do a line by line reaction. I just can't stomach the ulcers on going through that again. But this is the thing about an Apple presentation to Apple consumers and Apple fans. You'll never get a good look at what the rest of the industry is doing and how other companies have already paved the way for a lot of what Apple was showing us. Products that exist today that you don't have to wait for, you can just go out and buy them. Tech publications just regurgitate Apple marketing and it leads to a woefully lopsided view of the tech industry. If you only read analysts making claims like, only Apple can save the VR, you'll never get a good handle on what VR adoption really looks like. The Oculus Quest line by itself is selling slightly behind the estimated sales numbers of Xbox consoles. If we were ranking home gaming hardware, the Oculus Quest by itself would be the fourth place console in the market today. We don't need Apple to save VR, but we do need tech reviewers to type how many Oculus Quest have been sold into Bing chat. And from the consumer side, if you've been waiting for Apple, you've missed out on roughly eight years of fun experiences across VR and AR and these new wearable screens. Shifting gears here for just a second, we have to acknowledge the father of true wearable augmented reality. I was in the audience for the original HoloLens reveal. We got to see a demo of that in action. We got to see this live, a more practical example of a potential AR gaming experience. You see, when Microsoft shows something off, they never get the benefit of the doubt from the tech press. They actually have to show stuff. Every other company is graded on some idea of merit. Apple marketing is never questioned as directly. Apple will always get the kindest interpretation of their PR and their marketing claims. The same press glowing over Apple's simulated Vision Pro demonstrations would have savaged Microsoft if they showed off a 
simulation of what HoloLens performance might look like. Because even the outlets putting out headlines like Vision Pro's eye-watering prices are still largely reinforcing the idea that only Apple should be allowed to launch a premium, expensive, first-generation product. It's an implied confirmation of the reader's bias that Apple's are worth it and just work. But I digress. Back to the HoloLens. I've played that robot bug hunting game. It's a little clumsy, but it's really good at demonstrating actual room tracking. What Microsoft is showing in that keynote was not fake. You can grab a dev kit and play it yourself. Now, here's the kicker. That HoloLens demo was from seven years ago. HoloLens has been delivering hand tracking augmented reality for years now. There have been two generations of a fully self-contained AR headset with an integrated battery, not a stupid soap on a rope battery, a headset that already reacts to gestures and delivers actual room and space tracking. You know what we didn't see in the Vision Pro simulations? Actual interactions with your environment. How is Vision Pro augmenting your reality? When you hunt robots on a HoloLens, those bugs burst through your walls and move around your room. What did Apple Show Vision Pro doing? Floating windows in space in front of you. Seven years. And in terms of actual AR functionality, Apple is taking us a step backwards. This presentation was also a fun way to show how Apple is kind of a stupid bully. A couple mentions made about hand tracking magic while saying things like, you don't need bulky controllers. Who are they talking about? Are they talking about HoloLens? You don't need controllers for HoloLens. They have to be taking a shot at virtual reality, and why take a cheap shot at VR headsets? You know, those outlandishly expensive VR headsets that cost less than a third of what Vision Pro is gonna cost. Apple's making a really dumb, emotional appeal to an audience that likely doesn't understand AR and VR experiences. They're miseducating their customers to their financial benefit. What they're hoping is if you're a fan of Apple, you're, you're nodding along and saying things like, yeah, Apple got rid of that clumsy hardware. Except the competition isn't clumsy. Again, if it's AR to AR, Microsoft cracked that nut years ago. But if you're looking for immersive entertainment like games, how are you gonna play most games? Like, does it never land with those Apple fans how mean-spirited that criticism from Apple is and how it shows how little Apple thinks of their actual fans that as soon as they show someone using a Vision Pro to play a game, the user is holding a controller. Why would you support a company that thinks you're that dumb? You spend $3,500 on a Mac, you wear on your head, but how are you gonna play Beat Saber or Thumper or Tetris Effect? The tech press is going to crown Apple hand gestures the winner ignoring the practical uses from VR and ignoring the fact that Microsoft has been there for a while now. Apple stories get clicks and views, so those press outlets know they'll make more money confirming the bias of Apple fans. And those fans will never understand the amazing experiences they're missing out on. Years and years of rumors about when this headset would arrive and the smug tone from pundits and reviewers, maybe don't buy a headset today, wait for a better product or Apple will be late to the game, but they'll do it right, they'll do it the best. And it sucks because I know some people like that and those people would have enjoyed the actual products that are out now that people can buy, but they keep waiting for some kind of magic unicorn science fiction, science fiction product to arrive. And it has to be cheaper, and it has to be better, and it has to do more and be more worth it for the monies. And we know what the game is. We know they've set up an impossible criteria of purchase unless that product has an Apple logo on it. I'm looking at Apple's presentation and it's kind of silly how close it is to the limited experiences I've shown on these less expensive wearable displays. This is a really simple pair of screens that fold up into a pair of chunky sunglasses. Look at the way that Vision Pro floats windows in space in front of you. It looks a lot like the browser interface on the Rokid and Nreal, now Xreal glasses that I've shown off in my videos. I've gotten so many negative comments on these glasses that they're too expensive and they need to be wireless and have all day battery life and their own SOC and CPU and GPU and be smaller and cheaper and do the real AR and so many people telling folks in my comments to wait because Apple 
is working on real AR. So yeah, when I use these, I have a cable that runs over my ear that plugs into a phone or a PC. How is that worse than having a stupid cable run to a battery that has to live in your pocket. A battery that likely only runs that headset for maybe two hours, while a phone and these glasses can run for a lot longer. Oh, but Apple can copy your MacBook screen to your headset. You can use two computers to simulate the experience of using one computer, okay, I guess? So I doubt you'll wanna use it wirelessly far away from your computer, especially if you're out in public. So if I'm staying pretty close, I could also just plug these glasses into my PC and either screen share, extend my desktop, or turn my PC screen off for privacy. I'll give you that it's not nearly as flashy. It's way less techy sci-fi cool, but it kind of does the same thing. Oh, but you can watch movies on an aeroplane, which you could do with an Oculus, but why would you want to do that with a bulkier headset? Do you regularly see people flying with VR headsets? If a good screen for travel is what you need, these glasses are far more pocketable. Like, they literally fit in a shirt pocket portable. And your phone battery, or your tablet battery, or your Nintendo Switch battery, or your laptop battery, or your Steam Deck battery will last longer than the Vision Pro. The Vision Pro is certainly going to be fancier. It'll definitely have nicer, higher resolution displays. I think it'll have a better field of view than these consumer face displays, but we don't really know yet because Apple doesn't really share useful data on their products. They simulate a grand experience in their marketing, but this wraparound rendering is almost a lie when you consider how VR actually works. Apple hopes we won't notice how lean their information really is. It's all emotional hype appeals and putting down their competitors. But even giving Apple all of those hardware wins, it's shocking to me how close the practical experience is today on these glasses when paired with a premium phone or a PC, and these cost one-tenth the price of the Vision Pro. I could outfit my household and seven more of my closest geek friends with a really fun portable display for about the same price. This is a huge TV that fits in your pocket, a portable personal projector that can go anywhere you want. And if you bust these glasses, that would sting, but it would sting one-tenth as bad as busting up the Vision Pro. I'm expecting Apple's hardware to be nice. It's expensive. I'm really interested in those micro OLEDs because you know, Apple probably isn't making those. And if Apple can buy them, then hopefully other companies might soon be able to buy them too. One of the things I do like, the secondary OLED, is a great idea. HoloLens is a really simple visor. Wearable displays have these clip-on shields to block out light. Is really novel. I like that idea. I think it'd be cool to try. But it also looks like this headset is another exercise in Apple using proprietary cabling. And we can be sure that repair costs on something like this will be absolutely insane. And it's just kind of dumb. I mean, Microsoft figured out how to put the battery in the headset seven years ago. There is no defense for that on the Vision Pro, and you're a hypocrite if you're defending that design now today. We all know Apple fans have savaged similar compromises on competing products. I hear it all the time with wearable headsets that need to plug in a cable. I have to laugh to keep from crying. All the people that are gonna pretend that it's okay on an Apple product. But, but, but it's the first gen and Apple will make it better in the future. Microsoft figured it out. Oculus figured it out. We need the tech press to review Vision Pro just as savagely. There should be an immediate tone in Vision Pro commentary indicating that no one should buy a compromised device like this until Gen 2 or Gen 3 when they work all the bugs out. Maybe it's okay for a couple developers who like garbage, but even they should really wait until Apple can deliver a more refined Vision Pro Gen 2. How many times have we heard that kind of astute criticism in other brands' products in our tech reviews. Because my closet, right over there, has become something of a graveyard for truly good experiences that tech reviewers have shot down because a better version would arrive by Gen 2, and then we ended up with nothing. Today, there are 
no consumer facing products for a simple heads up display. The few options we experimented with a couple years ago were largely shrugged off or dismissed by reviewers. Reviewers told consumers to wait and now we have nothing. These were so much better than wearing a smartwatch, putting alerts and notifications and replies right up at eye level, interacting more organically with data instead of you know fiddling around with your wrist in a crown or pulling your phone out of your pocket to interrupt your whole day, but that wasn't good enough. These weren't good enough and they were too expensive and a bigger company like Samsung or Apple will give us a better version soon and now we have nothing. This product category doesn't exist. <laughs> Techies are in my comments every day. It's daily acting like actual augmented reality is right around the corner. Don't buy wearable displays or other glasses or VR. They should have magic sci-fi technology and be cheaper and self-contained and smaller and have batteries and wireless connectivity. And I wish I could share more of a laugh at their expense. You know, they want real AR and they keep telling people not to buy portable face monitors, but ultimately that just means people aren't even trying this stuff. Waiting sucks. VR, AR, or even passive projection. You can listen to someone like me try and describe with words what it's like to use a product like this. You can think you know what that's like, but until you put your eyes right up next to some lenses, you really don't know what it's like. I'm telling you, it's pretty cool, but you really gotta try it for yourself. Seven years, seven years after the launch of the HoloLens, Apple has barely moved the needle on AR. It's improving image fidelity. They should get some kudos for that. But so far it looks less capable, augmenting less of our reality and more just floating windows in our field of view. Apple didn't just play it safe, they threw the whole AR industry into reverse. And at $3,500, Apple is basically just playing in the same developer kit space as HoloLens and HoloLens 2. This isn't really a consumer facing product. Congratulations, you waited. You ignored real fun experiences you could have been playing with for a while now, and you still have nothing. Your dream of owning a sleek pair of glasses to do AR at consumer accessible prices is still years away. I'm going into my third generation of these inexpensive face displays, and I'm having a blast. From the evolution of the original bulky Sony cinema headset to these new portables, I like this ride. You know, the first pair I tried were pretty good, and they've gotten better and cheaper every year. From where I am today, I can buy six more pairs of glasses before I'll match the Vision Pro price tag. I wonder where we'll be in six years. I just can't shake that disappointment. As much as I ruthlessly despise many of Apple's business practices, there's still this hope that they will be my nemesis company. It's fun having a nemesis, but increasingly it's just so much hype. I want them to deliver the magic they advertise, and then I can hope that competition will fire up and we'll see this industry lurch forward. I want Apple to be the market leader they proclaim to be. Seven years after the launch of the HoloLens and this is all they have to show for that time and investment. That's such a disappointment. Apple isn't late to this party. Apple is a boat anchor dragging this whole industry down. On that note, I should probably wrap this up. I'm, I'm getting a little crankier about this than I thought I would. My last point, just before we head out, don't wait for the big brands, people. Big brands have to play it so safe now, will languish in this holding pattern forever. Be a real tech enthusiast and not just a big brand fan. Because I'm telling you, you're missing out on some amazing gear. You're missing out on the exciting stuff, the disruptive stuff. Now, some of this lands and some of it misses, but it's all fun and you will definitely get your heart broken along the way. But even for that heartbreak, it's way more fun than sitting on the sidelines and acting like you're so clever for never taking the jump or trying something different. That's so sad. I want you to have more fun. That's where we're gonna wrap this up. As always, folks, thanks so much for watching, sharing, subscribing to the channel, especially all the support, people you know, leaving comments or clicking on the links in my video descriptions, engaging in these kinds of conversations, even when I'm going super cranky, 
or uh, those of you who are joining the list of names scrolling by on your screen from my Patreon, patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. Uh, this list is basically the coolest collection of tech pals in the universe, and they also get exclusive access to some of my production diaries where we can further <laughs> some of this crankiness if you need to get your feelings out. Uh, so sometimes these videos become therapy. They're basically the coolest folks in the universe. I, I appreciate them very much. Uh, so I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet at some gadget guy. I host my podcast on the Twitch. Uh, I'm spending a little more time these days on the Mastodons, sharing photos to the Flickers, a little less so on the Twitters and the Facebooks and the Instagrams, but I will catch you all on the next video.